Still a Again, it'll be towards Chapman, headed out. And now McAllister back from Strachan. Here's Strachan again! <laughs> Have you ever seen a better goal? Oh, what a goal from Tony Aboa! Oh, that's tremendous stuff! John Sheridan's done it! Away goes Speed. He's got a start on them all this time. Go on, Gary Speed, get one yourself, son. And what a great goal! And Gary Speed really wrapped things up. Still, brilliant! Big brain, brilliant! Becchio, oh, super goal! Really classy from Luciano Becchio! And Leeds are back in front! Hello and welcome to this, the Have You Ever Seen a Better Goal podcast. This is episode number seven, Adam, number seven. Yeah. We've Ooh. not been told to go away yet. Well, we, well maybe we have, we just haven't heard it yet. Maybe people are hiding it from us to keep it, uh, to keep our, our morale up. Maybe. Well, I'm Sam Hare, also known as The Other Guy, uh, and every week I'm joined by my friend and fellow West End season ticket holder, Adam Can. I don't want to know what I'm known by then. A teethless guy on YouTube, yeah, apparently. That's him. Yeah, nice. uh, this is our regular podcast where we will take a nostalgic look back at a classic game across the history of Leeds United where we at least scored a goal. We're going to pick a game, talk through all of the key highlights and, of course, uh, all of the uh, action on a journey to better educate me across the history of Leeds United and, as it turns out, a little bit of history on football in general. Well, uh, you, you, after episode five, and if you haven't listened to it, please go back. You've been getting a little bit of stick for not knowing who Johan Cruyff well, was. M- more of that a little bit later. Yes. Uh, this week, we're going to take our first uh, trip to a modern history uh, for Leeds United when we were in our lower league period, uh, when we dropped to League One. Our first journey back into the League One days, the dark days of League One. The uh, the time when you could go to Elling Road and there was only 12,000 and there was plenty of space. Yet, we still charge Premier League prices thanks to Uncle Ken. Oh, he was a great guy, Ken. He wasn't really wasn't, no. Uh, wanker. Uh, and as always, we take a trip back in time with uh, Chilino's Time Machine Taxi. Is uh, the Greek Chilino coming out There's today? There's every chance that uh, we could have the Greek Chilino, the Russian Chilino. Is it, are they working in a, in a Greek restaurant today, smashing some plates, or part of the Russian mafia, perhaps? Just eating some hummus and enjoying life. Um, and we'll also follow through with some of the tweets that will come in on our fake news Twitter Twitter portal and see what the reaction is for this game. Uh, one thing that is important, though, do follow us on social media so you can give us lots of grief. <laughs> and, and people have been giving us lots of grief. That's true. Yeah, so please do follow us on social media. Our main account on Twitter is at a better goal. That's where you'll find both of us all of the time. But we're also on Instagram and Facebook. I've started to I've worked out a little bit how to use Instagram now. I know you're of. doing uh, uh, Man of the Match polls at the moment, aren't Man you? Man of the Match polls, the last poll got five votes Ooh. on Instagram. Although we do get a lot on, on Twitter, to be fair. Uh, yeah, I think Calvin Phillips is just winning everything. Well, the last two games, and we again by the time this goes out, we'll probably be back in another slump again, or we'll oh, I, don't I don't know, we'll be in good form. So it's hard to we're talk just, about current games. We're not going to talk about current games. That's not no, what we're here no. to do. Um, don't forget this podcast in his association with LS11 and their other pods that they have going on. That's with Darren, uh, Ryan, and Ben and, and the if, boys. And if you do want to hear about current games, that's the place to go. Absolutely. We've had some correspondence, Adam. Again? Uh, well, just this one on Facebook oh. <laughs> this time since the last episode. And this is from a guy called Dave Bean. Dave Bean, who uh, said, uh, Adam, this is a great podcast. You're really good. And as well as that other guy, he's not too bad. It's just a shame he doesn't know who Johan Cruyff is. Ah, that's why you're the other guy. The other guy. The other guy. And, and again, Johan Cruyff, mate. Jesus. Hey, look, I never said I knew anything about football in general. I go to Leeds game and I've gone to Leeds games for a long time. But my whole point of this uh, podcast is about educating me on football for Leeds, more importantly, but also other key important facts to know about. Well, we'll we'll do the quiz at the end of the show. It'd be really bad if I'd start this podcast going, I know tons about football. Yeah, that would have been really embarrassing. You see? So at least I was up front with the fact that I do know nothing. Well, well, the quiz at the end, this time, we're going to make it a bit more generic. Well, we're episode seven. Um, I've won one out of six. Yeah, but what a win. What's a win? I know. Things can only get better. Indeed. So we'll do a bit of world football this time. Not Leeds United related, but ones that 
you should get. Uh, and also a very big thank you to the LS11 boys for nominating me for the Alioski Files, which I didn't win. Another quiz that you didn't win. Another quiz that I wasn't involved with, but I didn't win just because of my uh, poor football skill knowledge. Okay, so this game is back on the 24th of April, so near the end of the season in uh, 2010. It's the penultimate league game, of penultimate home game of the season, I should say. Um, in League One. In League One. So, how long have we been in League, League One? One? What's going on? Give me a bit of the history. This is our third season in, in League One, and to, to say our form was up and down in the run-up to this game is probably an understatement. If we go back to the summer... We started the, the league campaign like a house on fire. So we won our first six games, maximum points after his first six games. We were unbeaten for 12 games before the run came to an end. Guess where the run came to an end? A way out, a team that we never win at. Brentford? Nope. You're in the right ballpark. In the right city. A London. Obviously. London team. In League One at the time. In League One at the time. They, they were... They were clue. They were pushing for promotion alongside us, and they also ended our playoff hopes the season before. And they're quite scummy. <laughs> That's quite a lot of teams down there. But really scummy. A bit stabby. Millwall. Yeah, Mill scum. <laughs> Mill scum. So they, they they beat us. But then we won the next five games, Sam. And we end by the halfway point of the season, by the time the year turned, we'd only lost one game in the league. And we were flying with a massive gap at the top of the league. A, a gap? A gap. Wow. A gap, you know, history says that we do very well at keeping gaps. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so uh, we basically kicked on. So everything just fell into place. Every, everything everything fell into so place. I, so only... Simon Grayson, I remember this. Simon Grayson was in charge at the time. You should remember that you, you came to games this season. I know. I was in, in and around... Um, just, you know, eating pies and ignoring pretty much the dire seasons before. Indeed. Really. Um, so how long had Grayson been with us by this season? This was Grayson's, I think this was Grayson's first full season. In so he, charge. he joined us in... But after McAllister had been fired the season before and then kind of took us to the end of that season. Had he made lots of changes before this promotion run? Not not massively. It, it's League One, so you get a lot of in and outs, a lot of lone players, a lot of players that don't make the grade. So it... That it's tricky to kind of judge it by championship standards or even Premier League standards because the turnover of players is so much higher than what it is, uh, what it is, what we're used to now, or what what we've seen in the Premier League in the years before that. Um, but yeah, a lot of players coming in on loan, a lot of short term loans where you'd see players come in for a few months. We saw a few of that happen in this this season. For example, Vokes came in, um, who's a player that I'm sure a lot of listeners will know is still playing today. Um, Sanchez Watt came in as well. Um, he featured Arsenal quite a lot in this game. Arsenal Loney. Um, so a lot of players now, but the big news before the start of the season was um, Fabian Delph, one of our homegrown players. Aston leaving. Villa. Went to Aston Villa, but interesting. He was all set to go to Manchester City. So a deal had been agreed between Leeds and Manchester City. Um, but obviously Man City owners were in Abu Dhabi and they had to basically do all the paperwork for it, and there was a massive delay in them doing that. Maybe they're on the summer holidays, and I don't know what people from Abu Dhabi do um, in the summer holidays. There's a joke there. I don't know. Well, it's just really warm there, so where would they go? They're not going to come to Manchester, are they? No. Um, so there was a week delay then, and Villa snuck in, and we accepted a bid from Villa. We did all the personal terms, and were done before Man City could even get any paperwork done before these guys came back from the holidays, which, which is why he went to um, Villa. Obviously, he ended up at City anyway later on in his career. Eight million, though. Eight million. How much I, of that did uh, did Leeds reinvest in? Oh well, we were Ken Bates, renowned for reinvesting into the team all the time. We we, I think we spent the prince the the big sum of five hundred thousand pounds that summer on two players. On two players, and do you know who they were, Sam? Max Gradle. Yep, two hundred fifty thousand. Correct. And then I think the other one is Bromby. Indeed. Very good. But I don't know if that's for sure, because I think Brom, it was back in the days in League One where everything was sealed. Yeah, undisclosed fees, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So um, Max Gradle wasn't an unknown quantity. We'd had him on loan beforehand. So it was good business. We were already calling him Twinkle Toes. We, were already, we already were. But it was good business, 250 grand for Gradle. We sold him on for a massive profit. But again, the money just wasn't being invested. Should never have left, in my opinion. 
I, I think he'd look back on that. He got a chance to go to, back to France. Um, he went to St. Etienne as well, a, a big club in France. Um, anyway, that, that, that's later down there. That's a season or so later on anyway. Um, but they, they, I think the fact of the matter is we were getting no investment in the team and it was Grayson's management that were getting us into the position. Having said that, this is a mighty good team. You only have to look at the what the players went on to do after the left leads. Sommer came in the, that time as well. So, Sommer came in... Um, for a, on a free transfer, but we shipped him straight out on loan, so he didn't really play for us that year. So we went to Chesterfield on loan for the first half of the season, then went to Lincoln, where he scored a bag load of goals for the second half of the season before coming back to us the season afterwards, where he scored goals for Leeds before his bad injury. And was Kisnobo here? Kisnobo again, a loan signing that we made permanent on a free transfer. Obviously, everyone knows Kisnobo from the headband on that he didn't have to wear, but it was a good he look charm. Yeah. He, he, he uh, played such a good game. Um, when he when he wore it before, so um, mm. so no 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 money being spent to the bottom line. I know it's League One, and you wouldn't expect big money to be to be spent. But when you've sold someone for eight million, where's that money gone? Where's the money gone? This is a question we still ask now. Into one of the sub accounts that's a sub account of another account into in some island city in... Leeds Holdings Europe backslash Bates dot net. Ken Bates' bank account at the bottom line yeah. in, in whatever yeah. Cayman Islands it's in. Um, bastard. Not good, that's for sure. Not not good, but the form and the pitch, as I said, at the start of the season were great. And then we went to Old Trafford. Oh, I'm going to say we lost. Start. I know, we didn't. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, because I, I was going to shout at you. You know, then. January 3rd. Remember, remember the, the day. day. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Good. I got you for once, though. You did get me then. Yeah, you did get me. So, yeah, look, we, we're not doing that game. I'm sure we'll do it at some point. But, yeah, we went to Old Trafford in the FA Cup, beat Man United in their own backyard. In the round afterwards, we got a draw with Spurs at White Hart Lane. And Grayson still had hair. And Grayson still had hair. Um, but the league form just went diabolical after that. So, from the turn of the year, after beating Man United, we won only three games from January until the 5th of April. But still managed to get promoted second with 85 points. Indeed. So it shows how good that first half of the season was. And we've had a really good first half of the season this year. We have, yeah. So I'm just relating this back to modern times. The similarities are, are quite key, actually. A good performance away to a big Premier League side in an FA Cup third round. Season capitulating a little bit. But then hopefully for the current team, anyway, turning it round towards the end... Um, but yeah, we, 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 we go into this game against Milton Keynes, and I will not call them Milton Keynes Dons. They are thieves. They stole a football club. They are Milton Keynes, and, and they shouldn't even be allowed in the Football League. So actually, any time we play them, should be a, an automatic win. So a complete novice on, on why it's Dons, why it's related to Wimbledon, all of that kind of connection. It doesn't make sense to me. So so Wimbledon, quite a historic club. Yep. Um Best known for winning the FA Cup in the late 80s. Biggest upset, maybe apart from when Sunderland beat Leeds, actually, in the 70s. Um, when they beat Liverpool, the old conquering Liverpool side, um, to win the FA Cup with a crazy gang, Vinnie Jones, Twatted Wise, um, players like that. And then they had a really long spell in the Premier League where, where they competed well, a lot of mid-table finishes, a lot of high higher mid-table finishes as well for that. Um, then they got bought by someone called Pete, Pete Wankelman. What a name. Well, it's not his real name, it's Winkleman, but he's a wanker, obviously. Um, who basically uprooted them from the, from the borough um, of Merton and moved them to Milton Keynes, who had no professional football team because it's a soulless, roundabout-filled shithole. Yes. I went well, once went to the town centre and said to somebody, is this the town centre? And they looked at me and went, Yes, I said it looks like a bus station. <laughs> Very sixes. Well, it's got there's nothing there. Town, it's just yeah. road. Apologies to anyone listening in Milton Keynes, by the way. Well, if you're a Leeds fan that lives in Milton Keynes, we feel sorry for you. Yeah, we we do, and you probably you probably don't want sympathy, but uh, sell sell your house and move, move back to Leeds, cheaper up, cheaper up here anyway. Hey, HS two at some point. Oh, dad, don't open that kind of words. <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, back back to Milton Keynes anyway. So the thieves. Wankelman stole a club, moved it 100 miles further north, um, where he's still a soulless, horrible place. It, just, it makes no sense. It just 
yeah. It was all done for money. It was all yeah. done for the commercial opportunity. Wimbledon never had big gates. In fact, Plough Lane, their old stadium, became derelict and used to share with uh, the shared with Charlton at the Valley for a couple of years. And then the sh- m- we'll remember mostly the shared with Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park, where your boa scored that scream that we talked about in episode five. Oh, yes. Um, but anyway, I'm not calling them Milton Keynes Dons. They'll be Milton Keynes for the purposes of this. Um, the Dons belongs to another club, which is AFC Wimbledon, who thankfully, thanks to the fans, have bounced back um, and are now competing well in League One and long may it continue. It's what you want to see. Absolutely. Oh, so this brings us to this uh, game that you've picked, which is Leeds versus Milton Keynes on the 24th of April 2010. Uh, an attendance of 25,964 rocks up to Ellen Road. To say that we are high up in the league at the time, looking pretty... Spot on to get promoted. Well, we were on a horrible run. We before this game, we dropped down to fourth. But actually, actually, in the build up to this, we started to turn the form around a little bit. Um, so we we built beat Yeovil away at Hewish Park. We beat Southend. Um, we at home we beat Carlisle. Then we lost to Gillingham before this game. But we found ourselves in fourth place. So we need the results to go for us. So the nine points up to grams. Yep, yeah, Norwich are already away at the top. They're already up by this point. So it's between us, Swindon, Millwall. Billy Billy painted the Swindon, by the way. Was he scoring then? <laughs> he was. He scored a shitload, including against us. So yeah, between us, Swindon, Millwall and Charlton for that second automatic place, and it was really tight up at the top. And we were in fourth place at this moment in time. We needed a performance, Sam. We needed to turn around that Gillingham result, and actually, we're on a better run of form then. And we need to put it back into our own hands. Now... I dig deep in my memory. I think we were at this game. I think we were at this game, yeah. And I don't know if it was a time when we sat in the East Stand for a very brief moment and realised that you can't actually fit in the East Stand unless you are under the age of 13. No, we're both really fat and I've got really long legs, so... Right, there is that. The East Stand's or, for us. Weirdly, I think this might have been the game where we'd moved to the West Stand, but we weren't sitting where we, we now sit uh, because the drunk Norwegians... Were sitting there. The Norwegians are always there. They're great fun. I know, um, but I think it was the one where the guy fell asleep. Oh, it could have been that game, you know. Yeah. No, that was a, that was during the war the years. Do you reckon? Yeah. Well, you're not going to fall asleep in this game. There's a lot going on. This game is where mental. you are going to fall asleep during a Neil Warnock game. Uh, Michael Oliver is refereeing this game. Heard of Michael Oliver? At the time, he's an upcoming referee, which is why he's refereeing in League One. But now he's one of the Premier League's better referees, actually. People argue with that, to be honest with you. But no, no, he 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 has an interesting game in this match, let's say. Yeah, so uh, when we go into this game, though, we are in second place. We are in second place. We dropped we drop to fourth um, before we had that little run. And um, Milton Keynes are in an 11th. Milton Keynes are in 11th, not, yeah, the outside chance of playoffs, but not. And really. the interesting thing, they only put six subs on out of a possible seven. Yeah, or maybe they couldn't steal another player from somewhere. Thieves. So odd, odd that you're going to come to one of the biggest games of the season for them because you know everybody that comes to face yeah, absolutely a cup, a mini cup final yeah, for yeah. them. And actually, the season before it was Milton Keynes who done our um, done our chances of automatic playoffs that season as well by beating us at their place in a turgid performance. So would you like me to run you through the team? Do the lineups, mate. Do you want me to start with Milton Keynes this week or Leeds? Uh, Milton Keynes was through. No one will have heard of any of them. Um, Willie Garrett. French, I think. He is French. Yeah, I see. Not Dutch. French. Very good. Uh, Dean Lewington. Uh, son of uh, Ray Lewington, who, who would manage Wimbledon. Uh, Matthias Doomby, defender. No. D- David McCracken. Yeah, I've heard of him, Scottish. I Scottish think, defender. Yeah. Darren Powell. No. Defender, Luke Howell. No. Midfielder, Luke Chadwick. Oh, God, that face. The ugliest man the in ugliest football. The ugliest man in football. Scum. Dirty, ugly scum. The one sticker you never wanted in your opinion. No, sticker no, album. no, no. Uh, Peter Levin. Never heard of him. Mark Randall. No. Sam Baldock. Yes. Journeyman. Journeyman player. Midfielder, I think. Jermaine Easter. Yeah, again, journeyman striker. And then uh, we had on the bench, Stuart Searle was the goalkeeper on the bench for MK. Adam Chickson. Uh, Sol Davis, Lewis Goburn, Alex Ray, and Charlie Collins. Right, Alex Ray played for Wolves for a while. Um, that's about all I can tell you there. Excuse my ignorance about League One football and opposing teams, but I, I only concentrated on Leeds back then, and um, I didn't give a hoot about 
the Milton Keynes team particularly. Uh, if we look at Leeds, yes, playing very much Simon Grayson favoured a four four two. Four four two, yes, loved a four four two. Shane Higgs in goal. Hey. Uh Neil Collins. Yeah. Um, Richard Naylor. Cap- ben ca- club captain. Ben Parker. Ben Parker, friend of LS Eleven, co-host of LS Eleven. Uh, Max Gradle. Yep. And well, so, so so here, again, it's how it's listed on there. You've got Andy Hughes probably playing right yes. back. Andy Hughes, he's listed as a midfielder. Yeah. So, Cult hero, Andy Hughes. What a player. Um, Max Gradle. Yep. Uh, Bradley Johnson. Yeah. He loved a 30-yard hit, didn't he? He loved a 30-yard hit. Would, would probably score as often as we score from corners now <laughs> with his 30-yard hits. Some guy called Neil Kilkenny. You know Neil Kilkenny. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at you, I sound like he's this really famous footballer. I know. Uh, oh, Robert Snoddy Snodgrass. Snodgrass. This is a team, oh, you see. Sanchez what? Yep. And Luciano, Luciano. He costs less than Berbatov and he scores more goals. Very good. What, what, oh. So there's a name missing from that team, Sam. Is there? Yes. Who's looks, that? Who, looks like 11 players to me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's our, our pivotal striker at that point in time? Oh, the hero. Jermaine Beckford. Jermaine Beckford. He scored a fucking great goal. He, he certainly did in a scum shit goal. Yeah. <laughs> so Beckford had been dropped by Grayson in the build up to this game in a few games of fun. And Grayson was actually playing Gradle and Becchio up front. Um, the, Why? Well, according to Grayson. farm? We'll come to Grayson and we'll play a little sound by Ash. We've got a nice interview with him here. Not that we did the interview. When you get into that second, you're there to be shot at. We've been there all season and people are looking to beat us. But once you get there, it's a different type of pressure staying there and maintaining it than actually trying to catch people up. Jermaine scored the goals that he had done all season and previous seasons, but felt his performances were just sort of below par a little bit maybe he needed to be taken out of the fine line for a little bit he'd not scored and maybe the pressure was showing for him but also the, the team but I'd seen what Max and um, Luciano have been doing in training what they've been doing in the match situations when they were playing and, and I felt it was the thing to do but, but Grayson's saying that he basically wasn't putting the effort in so there'd been a bit of a roller coaster ride with but if I'm honest he, he, he was one of the, the most pro- prolific uh, bum liners that we ever had. He loved to sit off the edge of the uh, back four and, and tap a goal in, didn't he? I, I think you're doing him a slight disservice there. He he had a natural finishing ability and he's, a lot of his goals were those kind of taps, but you've got to be in that position there to, to do that. But at the same time, he does do some shit pingers from outside the box or he'd run on to balls from down the channel. So that's a disservice, I'd say, to, to Paul Germain on there. Um, but Throughout this season, the whole narrative of the season, outside of Leeds being promoted, was will Beckford stay or will he go? He was he was criticised for not tracking back a lot, though. Yeah, God, yeah, yeah. He wasn't he, he wasn't a workhorse. He, he struggled under Bielsa, I think. I don't think he got a look in. No, quite possibly not. Murder ball on a on a on a Wednesday, he'd, he'd probably struggle with. Um, but like in, on in the build up to his game, Leeds offered him a three year contract that he turned down. He's been courted by Premier League clubs as well, so you can kind of understand it. So Leeds put him on the transfer list. After a stand, because he's Ken actually... Ken smelling the money. Ken smelling the, smelling the money. But this is his last year of his contract as well, bear in mind. Yeah. So some people would say, let's cash in on him. But actually, he was playing really well. We started the season really well. He was scoring goals. We took him off the transfer list. After the Old Trafford thing again, all the clubs are sniffing around. He puts in another transfer request, basically the day after the Old Trafford win. Um, oh, what a surprise. And then four days later, he sends it and says, right, I'm going to stay, I'm going to see out my contract till the end of the season, get my head down, let's hear no more about it. Um, which is exactly what he did, to be fair. But according to Grayson, in the build-up to this game, um, or in build-up to the games before this, he wasn't putting the grafting that was required, and he felt, Grayson felt that Becchio and Gradle were the preferred choice up front. And naturally, we beat Yeovil, Becchio and Gradle. Gradle scoring, South End, Becky on the score sheet, Carlisle, Becky on the score sheet. So, kind of makes sense. Um, and of course, Beckford's big moment would come in the last game of the season where Grayson made the brilliant decision of bringing him back into the starting lineup and making him captain. Showcase yourself right at the end of the season. Showcase yourself, but also it, it's a thank you, it's a reward, and it's a pat on the back. And you've got, you've got your talisman in a great mood for the biggest game you've had for years. 
Well, not to uh, forget the bench, for Leeds we had Casper Ankergan, or Casps, uh, Lee Bromby, Michael Doyle, Johnny Howson. On the bench. Yeah, he's been a lot this season on the bench. Still quite a young player at this point. Uh, Jermaine Beckford, our friend from the US of A. Mike Greller. Mike Greller. Uh, and Gary McSheffrey. Gary McSheffrey, interestingly. Um, I, I I watch Frickley Athletic sometime, which is a, the local club to me, non-league clubs. If Leeds are away and I can't go, I'll go and watch Frickley if I get the chance. And I turn up one game and Gary McSheffrey were playing for him. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Turned about a few weeks later, you weren't there anymore again. So I don't, I don't know what happened. Um, Crazy. Well, usually I like to run you through the game of you know, what was the discipline like in this game in history? I'm going to save that I think you probably this should. time um, because it's such an amazing game. Yeah. Right, so are we ready for kickoff? Let's kick off. We said before about Leeds getting out of the blocks and on so many of these games we do, we start, we seem to start really well and this this is no different to that. So Sanchez, what, who was in the, in the team basically in place of Beckford, so Gradle had moved forward. Um, from the wing, and we had to move San, San, uh, Sanchez Watt in, into that into that position. Um, dispossesses one of their players midway inside his own half. Then he just drives. He drives to the edge of the area, plays a simple ball through to Becchio, and the delicate little finish from Becchio, side foot, left footed, into the just past the goalkeeper and leads a one nil up. It's a wonderful uh, take by uh, Sanchez Watt off the uh, MK defender. Just takes it away, you know, sees that pass straight away. Beautiful. He, that that defender, I think he's Duembe or something like that, has a torrid time in this game. Sanchez Watts all over him. It's probably maybe Sanchez Watts' best game for Leeds, actually. I'd say and he did, we got him back on loan the season afterwards as well, and he, he scored a couple, and his career kind of faded away, and he went into the non league where he still plays today. But there were a player there. We used, a we've taken quite a lot of players on loan from Arsenal, haven't we? Yeah, we have a fairly well. You just think of in Kaya, aren't you? Yeah, why? Were there others? No, no, like, not that off the top of my head I can think <laughs> of, to be honest with you. 13 minutes in. 30 minutes in, it's a great start. Levin gets a foot in, it's back with Matias Dumbay. He's lost out here to Sanchez Watt. What in towards Luciano Becchio! Fantastic start, 12 and a half minutes played for Leeds. And Luciano Becchio scores! MK Dons punished for their mistakes. Sanchez Watt on the end of it. One of the players that Simon Grayson introduced to the league starting 11. He played the ball into Luciano Becchio. Round the keeper, Guerre. And Leeds lead inside Ellen Road. You've gone through the team there and you can see that, you know, we're listening off grade or played at, played at the highest level, played in the Premier League, played in Ligue 1 in France as well. You've got Becchio played in the Premier League, kind of. Um, you've got Beckford on the bench who played in the Premier League. You've got Snodgrass who played in the Premier League today. You've got Bradley Johnson who played in the Premier League. Look at the defenders. By the way, we've already picked up our first yellow card at this point. Um, who was that? Bradley Johnson. Bradley Johnson, right, dirty. But all, all these players are from a forward thinking point of view. Played in the Premier League and went on a high level. Most of the defenders didn't. And the great that Grayson team was known as being a bit weak um, at the back. Well, it's often been uh, said around where we sit. What would this Grayson team be like if you had the defence that we've got today with that strike partnership of like absolutely Beckford, uh, Gradle, and Becchio? Yeah, and this is no different, Sam. So, so they, they get a free kick, um, kind of midway in their own half to, to the Milton Keynes, play a long ball in, and um, Dean Lewington basically volleys it in completely unmarked. Simplest goal you'll ever see. Um, frustrating, and also think what the atmosphere would have been like. So we've had a little, we've, we've had a blip, we've had a, then had a, a fairly decent one, then we've lost again the game before this. Is it slipping out of our hands? We know how the crowd can turn sometimes at Ellen Road, unfortunately. And even with 25,000, you can feel that atmosphere It's the change. hardcore as well, the ones who, who were going there. But I'd also say that in the pivotal moments, at the time when that team leaders were there, and I think this is one of those games where the crowd don't get back. It gets really, really supportive and they get right behind the lads. Levin with the ball in towards the penalty area. And it's been turned in. It's an equalising goal. Levin's ball in towards the penalty area. And Dean Lewington just stuck out the right boot and has scored the equaliser. Then the game continues and Lee's are back on the front foot. I'm not going to tell you you got the next yellow card. Kilkenny usually gets No, booked. no. It was another Leeds player, though. Go on. Um, he's a he's a hero. 
Andy Hughes. Andy Hughes got booked. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he picked up a few, to be fair. So, Leeds are back on the front foot. Again, uh, this is another error by Milton Keynes because Kilkenny intercepts a stray pass that they're playing out from the back. It's a terrible ball, isn't it? Yeah. And then Kilkenny kind of moves forward. I would say he doesn't really drive forward. He kind of stumbles his way forward to the edge of the box where a couple of tackles come in. He kind of rides the tackles, but the ball falls really nicely into the path of Gradle, who hits it hard, low, into the bottom left-hand corner of the goal. Keeper's not got a chance. No, no, he's not got a chance. He's hit so quickly, but it's that instinctive finish. So well to stay um, onside as well. Yeah, yeah, it does really well to stay onside, but he got a really instinctive finish into the bottom corner of the goal and actually leads it to an up. And you think maybe the tide's turned here. It's lucky that Kilkenny didn't fall over, to be honest. You were close to one, eh? I know, really close. Anyway, let's enjoy this. There is a mix-up here because it's Kilkenny with a chance. Edge of the penalty area. Might fall now for Max Grado! Brilliant! Leeds lead again. And Max Grado joins his striking partner, Luciano Becchio, in scoring. And Max Grado on the score sheet in front of the south stand. So before we go to half time, that's the end of the goals for the first half. But before we go to half time, there's, there's a really shite throw from the keeper. This is from the Millen Keynes keeper, and he, he really plays a plays a defender into a, a world of problems. Sanchez was quicker to the ball than than um, Duembe again, who was mentioned earlier as having a torrid time. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Um, what gets to the ball first? And Duembe kind of slides in late to Sanchez. What kind of clashes against the shins? There, but he, he looks like he's hurt. What? Oh, he's taking him over. And as you look at it, that Milton Keynes, because I've got to say Milton Keynes can't say MK. Yeah, Dunst, he can't say MK. Dunst, um, right. It's the fact that he raises his legs into what um, as he's going over, and I think it's that movement. It, it's like there's a bit of afters left in, and that's why I think he's a red card. Well, yeah, he's so two footed. I see. I, I don't think it is two footed. Oh. So Michael Oliver sends him off, um, and I don't think they can have too many complaints. I think it's a little harsh. Not that I'm complaining. But I, I think it's a little harsh. I think he's. I don't think his studs are up. I think he's gone in with one foot. But I think there is a follow through. But I think that's just his momentum. And if you think about the pace, mm. he's just, his keeper sold him down the river. Have a look. Send us a tweet. You tell us what you think whether this is a red card or not. But I think at forty three minutes, Mateus Duembe. Duembe, however you want to. He's say absolute it. red card. Fine. Hey, well, the, like I say, we we the jury's out. The the history books will say it's a red card, and Milton Keynes are down to ten men. I'm probably quite lucky that he's close to the break. Yeah, well, they can, they can get back in and regroup. Not that he did him much good, but they can they can do that, I suppose. Well, now the goalkeeper Guerre's throw out nearly found its way to Sanchez Watt, who got caught on the shin there by Dumbe. It's a red card. It's a red card shown to Matthias Dumbe for the challenge. Well, that brings us to half time, Sam. Now, you want to mix it up now, don't you, half-time? I do, I do. I want to do a little bit different, and uh, let's uh, instead of talking about it at the end, let's just have a little look back at April 2010. So you've got the number one of the week itself and the number one of the Sunday, and there's a little, um, little I would say, an E-list celebrity clang. I think I think E-list is being generous. Oh. Um, maybe not at the time. X-list. Yeah, at what? X... Factor. Oh, right. I thought you were saying you went no, out with No, 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 no. So do you know what number one was at the time of this game? At the actual time, no idea. No uh, idea. I'm Usher. Not in... Usher. With, oh my God. Oh, we um, Will I Am as well. Correct. Off of the Black Eyed Peas. Yes. That, that sounds like drivel. Number one, but he was knocked off the number one spot by the uh, X Factor winner. She didn't win, did she? Well, runner up. Did Alexandra Burke win that? Why Why do I know that? You know why you know that? Because that year was the year we actually met. Alexandra Burke, clang. Oh, yeah, because we just through work. You don't need to know where. But, yeah, did yeah because she'd won X Factor and she got taken on a trip where we were working anyway. Um, so okay. that's, that's why you know that. Anyway, us. so number one was Sam at the uh, day after Once. By Diana Vickers. By Diana Vickers. Dreadful song. Yeah, but... Sure, the... she, sure, sure, sure. It's like a female Ronan Keating. Well, I happened to work in a, a in a nightclub in Huddersfield, and woof, woof. <laughs> uh, no dogs allowed. And uh, one of the, uh, the patrons that came patrons 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 <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, one of the people that came into the nightclub that night after this game, and that's why it's all falling back into place, was Diana Vickers. Wow! Um, and I'll tweet out the picture of of Diana Vickers and me at the club. Have you still got the picture? I've still got the picture. Wow. 
Wow, you you meet all the uh, A-list celebrities. She asked me to play, because I had a, a, a dance version of once, she asked me to play it three times that night. She requested her own song. Her own song. <laughs> not once. Three not, times. <laughs> see what I did there? Not once. once. Three times. <laughs> yes. Wow. Three times and danced to it twice. It's the first number one, to be fair, but it's pretty egotistical. I know. It was her only number one. It was only song, wasn't it? I, I think she was a bit nice that I wouldn't play the original, but I just said, that ain't going to work in here, love. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Did people groove to it? Did anyone know who she was? Uh, well, they danced, and then they all kind of pulled that face of, you playing this again? Any seedy locals tried on us, and that's not, not their type for just feel people, is it? She called Lassie, they'd be all over her. <laughs> what? Nothing. Nothing at all. I have to live here. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I have to work here. Move. I you know. told the people earlier to move. You move. That's Milton Keynes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's at least we same. have hills here. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure we'll go with that as our uh, end of pod song, though. Depends on what else crops up. And basically, there was naff all news at this time, really, uh, on the 24th of April. No, oh, okay. 2010, that was notable to talk about. Anyway, Grayson's had his team talk. Who was the manager of MK Dons at this time? I wouldn't... Oh, oh, and I, yes, I do know who this was. So it was Paul Scummer Ince... Ah, but he said he wasn't going to um, wasn't going to manage them next season. Then got told not to go to the game, so he didn't actually go to the game. So it was the, uh, the assistant, whoever, whoever the assistant was at the time. I've no, no idea, but typical Paul Ince, uh, just to make matters yeah. worse. Fake club, fake manager, um, thieves. Well, half time's over. Let's get into the. Probably the best second half of a game this season, if it's my opinion. Yeah, no, it's a good second half. So they're playing against 10 men, first of all. In a game, they're pretty much dominated in the first half anyway. And again, it's that man Sanchez, what Sam, um, wins the ball inside his own half and plays a lovely ball down the channel, um, down the side of the West Ham, towards the cop, where Luciano Becchio, with his wonderful long blonde hair, oh. the Argentinian god, what a player, Probably my favourite player, actually, since the Premier League days. I want to go and eat in his restaurant. Oh, I'd love to eat in his restaurant. If you don't follow Becky on Instagram... Um, you can't clearly see where some of the Leeds United money that he was uh, paid has gone. He, do, he does kind of... He does like... It's like a Fazenda-esque restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a Redizio. Yeah. And no, oh, it just looks incredible. It's on right on the beach. Um, where, where about is it? Mallorca? I think so. Yeah. I don't really Palmer care. Mallorca I just look at the food and think, oh. looks incredible. Anyway, promotion there for, <laughs> for Luciano's restaurant. And Luciano, if you are listening to this and, and you would want like to invite to sponsor us, us. <laughs> oh, I was going to go welcome. for the sponsoring, but yeah, I'll have a free trip. Yeah, away free, and eat free the trip's food. even better. Forget the yeah. sponsoring, mate. Becchio gets the ball. He's on the edge of the box. He lays the ball back to Bradley Johnson, who first time left footed chips the ball into the area. And Beckford's con- Beckford, who's on as a, as a sub, by the way, um, probably should have mentioned that beforehand, but Beckford's on as a sub. Which I think is probably grace and thinking, look, they're down to 10 men, let's explain. Yeah, right, and and it's quite an interesting change that he makes because he takes Snoddy off. He takes Snoddy off, who not had much of an impact. Everything had gone down the other side where Sanchez, what we're playing. It's uh, it's interesting. We we take uh, Housen off, uh, for, no, we take Ben Parker off for Johnny Housen on the 59th minute. We'll have to ask Ben if he were injured again, which is why he came off. Because that's quite an early substitution. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, on the 75th minute is where uh, Jermaine comes on for Snoddy. Yeah, so Milton Keynes have shut up shop um, to try and minimise What's really sad the damage. is, you know, uh, Luke Chadwick uh, has been taken off on the 63rd minute. Oh, there, there, never mind. Um, nothing play when he played for them, nothing play when he played I mean, for Milton I mean, the Keynes. referee should have just shown him a red card for his face. Absolutely. Um, so anyway, back to the goal. Johnson plays the ball in first time. Becchio's completely unmarked, stretches his right foot out, um, kind of on the edge of the six-yard box and volleys it into the top corner of the goal. Wallop. It's a great finish. The keeper's got no chance. But why is Beckford completely unmarked? Because they're down to... Possibly because they're down to 10 men and we've exhausted them out. But have a listen to the goal. This is Sanchez Watt. Good ball, that, from Sanchez Watt. Into the path of Luciano Becchio. Becchio's got Bradley Johnson arriving. Johnson in two, to move Beckford. It's 3-1 Leeds. Wonderfully worked goal. Great ball in from Bradley Johnson. And Jermaine Beckford scores as he has done so often this season. Off the bench as a substitute. And once again, Simon Grayson's changes pay dividends. And Jermaine Beckford scores in front of the cop end. It's a peach. It is. It's, it's a lovely finish, and that's what Becky would get at. It's everything you were saying earlier about being that fox in the box kind of player that, that he could be. Um, um, but that was it. He was a, he was a poacher, and he could just get in the right places. Yeah. And p- and people didn't see him. 
You know, he could get away with that. He got away from defenders. Yeah, no, he did do any his mo- movement was fantastic. Three one um, up. We've got Gradle, Becchio and Beckford on that that, oh. that dream strike force all at the same time now. If you could have all three of those players in the current Leeds United squad right now, would you do yeah. it? Yes, but maybe not with Bielsa as manager. I think Be- I think Becchio would work really well. In I think Becchio would start. I think Becchio would do that Bamford job. He's like, bring Becchio back. Let's start that off again. <laughs> that we've done every year since he finished, <laughs> since he left Leeds. Bring Becchio back. He's selling meat. He's on enough. Uh, but coming back for the Munich game, though. I know. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. Again, that might have been by the time this comes. I oh, know it's end of March. It's fine. Yeah, we're all right. Yeah, and Michael fucking Brown. Because all it's going to be a legends match. Is the team of Michael Brown. None of the Warnock lot should be allowed. Anyone that he signed. Well, they should be allowed to come, but pay and sit in the stands. Hey, I'm going to have a... <laughs> it's a good laddie's brown, brownie. <laughs> Prick. <laughs> so, it is the 80th minute. We are 3-1 up. You know, is that it? All over? See uh, the game out? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Simon Grayson team wasn't wasn't renowned for, for game management, let's say, too much anyway. Although, again, you can look back at the Old Trafford performance and say they managed that game really well. But McSheffrey, like, loops his hopeful ball forward. He kind of just sticks his foot out and he goes forward. And he actually puts Beckford through on goal. Beckford's clean through. And then McCracken, the, the Scottish centre-back for Milton Keynes, basically asks Beckford for a piggyback. Jumps on Beckford's back. Um, inside the penalty area. Stonewall penalty. It's, it's close. It's on the edge. But you could say, def- you definitely could say, contact and he's definitely last man. You could say so. first contact or outside the box, but the foul, the actual foul was inside the box. It's a penalty and Michael Oliver's got no choice but to send him off. The rules at the time there, there was no double jeopardy. Last man, clean through. Oh, you yeah. prevented a goal scoring opportunity. It's a red card and Milton Keynes are down to nine men and Leeds United have a penalty. McSheffrey, touch for Beckford to get on the end of. It's Jermaine Beckford brought down, surely. Penalty kick. Leeds have the chance to make it 4-1 against nine men of MK Dons because David McCracken is sent off. Last man brought down Jermaine Beckford. It's gone from bad to worse for the team from Buckinghamshire. Unbelievable. McSheffy coming on for Sanchez, what? Literally just before that. So that's probably his first touch to, to, pretty to play, much just to play, to play through. Um, so, so Beckford steps up now. Be- Beckford's got a good record from the spot in this season. And you look at the, the FA Cup fourth round game in the last minute where we got a penalty at White Hart Lane. Balls of steel from Beckford. He scored a penalty in the game that we lost uh, before this as well. Doing him quite late in the game there as well. He hits it low, hard. Underneath the goalkeeper, it's not the greatest penalty in the world. The keeper goes the same way, the same way, the right way. Yeah, it goes under him though. I think it's the pace and the power on the on the shot that that, that it goes in. It's not a great penalty, like I say, he could have been. Saved. If you look at that keeper, he's already on the coach home on his edge. Uh, absolutely, but any any penalty that goes in is a good penalty, Sam. I'd, I'd say. After seeing a penalty this year, that that you could argue that. So. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's a few of them actually. MK Dons down to nine men. Willie Guerre, the goalkeeper. Been all over the place this afternoon, facing the penalty of Beckford, and Beckford scores under the body of Willie Guerre. 30 for the season for Jermaine Beckford now. Two this afternoon, and two goals that have calmed any nerves that you might have had. Guerre dived the right way, and Beckford managed to find a gap underneath the goalkeeper. I mean, we've, we've watched uh, in the last uh, couple of episodes some really, really good McAllister penalties. Yeah. Very different. Very different. It, it's power. And a lot of people will always say, take a penalty, just put your foot through it. The law of average you say, if you put your foot through it, you, you, you're going to score. And stay forward. Around this ta- tippy tap and stuff. I'm not so much for that. I, I think back to 1990 World Cup and Stuart Pearce putting his foot through it. Um, and... and the German keeper saving it and I've always been like no pace power like McAllister did that's what you want to in that top corner so even if the keeper goes the right way you can't save it um, then you've got to be a really good player to do that and then uh, Neil Collins gets a yellow card for Leeds that's our last yellow card weird cards again I know um, it's not the last card of the game though is it Sam it, is it not the last it's card not the last game. card of the game but it, um, to, clo- to close the game out really dodgy tackle um, dodgy is an understatement yeah, yeah it caused a bit of a fracas 
between the players. And this is before uh, well, Collins gets booked. I think as part of this incident because he the, he's got he's got hold of his shirt and he's giving it a bit. See, remember and, and and you know at this time the whole crowd's giving it a bit. Of, Get it yeah, 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 yeah. And so another red card for Milton Keynes, and they finish the game with eight men. Jermaine Easter does well against Collins. No support for him though. Bit of foul there. Now Collins is having a little battle here with Peter Levin. We don't want to see this. We do not want to see this at this stage of the game. Another red card. Unbelievable. Peter Levin now walks down the tunnel. And Mike Oliver, the referee, has now sent off Matthias Dumbe, David McCracken and now Peter Levin. MK Dons are finishing the game with eight men. Wow. But more importantly, it's three points for Leeds with two games left of the season. Momentum. Momentum. And then we'll after this, we face Charlton, one of the other automatic promotion hopefuls, away from home before we close out against Bristol City. Oh, and surely that must be a shoe in <laughs> It's Leeds United. Now, luckily, actually, in this game, the results went our way. So Millwall dropped points, Swindon dropped points, and um, Charlton dropped points, and we won. So actually, the results went in our favour, and it meant that we could lose to Charlton, which is what we did, one nil at the Valley. But it, it was still in our hands at Bristol City. We will do the Bristol City game sometime. I won't go into it now, but I'm sure people will remember that we never, we didn't make it easy for ourselves. No. Do you, um, before we get onto your favourite goal, do you think that the Leeds players at the end of this season would have, because they held first for pretty much the oh. first third. Of the season, I, I'd say the first half of the season. Well, they did hold first, really, because it was until it was the Old Trafford thing where the season went tits up after, after we beat Man United, and I, I think there was an element of them believing their own hype a little bit. Um, look, we've beaten Man United, Old Trafford were untouchable. We've got a draw at White Hart Lane against Spurs, a very good Spurs team, um, and then you've got to go and play Wickham away. It's a little bit after the Lords Mayor, Mayor show, you know what I mean? It. So, the human beings at the end of the day, but I think there was a little bit of believing them. Cock of the now. rock. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, he, and it, it took good management from from um, Grayson to turn that around and get us over the line in the end. Um, I think there was some harsh words probably said, and, and I think the catalyst to it was probably dropping Beckford. That was, that, was the, that was when he turned around, and then great management in the last game of the season, where he gave him the armband and brought him back. Why did Grayson leave in the end? He was fired. Why? Uncle Ken. Rental. Uncle Ken. Do you think he'd ever come back? He'd love to come back, but he's not the same manager now. He's just been fired from uh, got, Blackpool. Got no hair. That's not relevant. No, no. And he has just got I have no hair. hair. <laughs> yeah, he's, got, he's just been fired by, Black, by Blackpool, and let's say the fans are exactly disappointed by it. You have Luciano Becchio's 13-minute goal. You've got uh, Dean Lewington, you never know, 19th-minute goal. You've got Max Gradle's 33rd minute goal. You've got Jermaine Beckford's 80th minute and Jermaine Beckford's 86th minute. What is your favourite goal in this game, Adam? I like Becchio's first goal, Sam. Um, Sanchez Watt, lovely little pinging uh, I, ball forward. Yeah, it's not even, uh, I like the way Sanchez Watt dispossesses the play. It's very much a Bielsa high press kind of situation. You're not letting them play out from the back. The ball through to Becchio's great, but it's the finish. It's the delicate little finish that he plays. You could put your foot through that. On the inside of the keeper as well. On the inside of the keeper because that's where the keeper had left the space. Um, that's why I like it. I think I think Beckford's volley for the third goal is really good. And, and Gradle's first time instinctive shots kind of thing that we need now in, a t- in the team. Um, but the, the Be- it's Becchio because it's Becchio in it. Beckford's volley for me. Oh, really? Okay. A nice little bit of movement. The work up play to that ball going into the box. And a striker just being in the right place. Right place, right time, and putting it in the back of the net. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, fair. So as much as I do love that direct ball run on, I'd love to see a lot more of the uh, that kind of Beckford S goal yeah, coming nice. off at the moment. Better finisher than uh, our current number nine. <laughs> what? I'm a bit sad in this episode. Why are you sad? You've not mentioned Lukic at all. <laughs> oh dear. There's still, enough, there's still more time left, but no, I don't think Lukic was going to come up until you brought him up. Uh, right, so that is the end of this game. 
Okay, so let me just uh, pull out my interactive CD-ROM connection kit. Free serve? Yes. And press connect. And as the slow pixel picture of time slowly appears on my screen, I can double click on our Twitter Twitter portal and have a look at some of the comments that have come in on the back of this game. Was Twitter really around then at no. this point? No, this whole feature is the fact that it, it would be what it would like. Yeah, but what I'm asking is, in 2010, what, actually, could we have gone back if we hadn't been lazy and actually thought about this before recording? Could we have gone back and actually found some real tweets? Oh, it must be very much in its infancy. For the length of time it would take me to try and get back to 2010. You've got to do intelligent searches, haven't you, to try and do it. But I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. That Probably at this time, people would be looking on an iPhone 1, maybe. 2010. Just, just about coming out. We'd be past WAP. We'd definitely be on 3G. Yeah, maybe. So I, you've probably got a legitimate tweet. Well, it's not easy finding real tweets back from 2010, especially in a game that's actually quite forgotten. If I search for Bristol City or Man United then I'll probably find a shitload of tweets. But League One. But but Le- League One MK Dons. But I have found one, Sam. Okay. I have found one. So this is from Neville Brody. Real um, tweet. At Neville Brody. Um, I wouldn't bother following him now, by the way, because he hasn't tweeted since the 8th of November 2010. <laughs> um, he's not even got a profile picture, hasn't our Neville. But he, all he's got is a... Um, an open mouth face. And he says, LUFC leads v Milton Keynes Con- team news. Jermaine Beckford... Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So I'm Probably guessing, hinting that he was on the bench. I, I think the Neville is shocked that, that Beckford isn't playing, um, despite the fact he's not played in the in the other games. Wow. Um, wow. So I'm so glad I spent hours trying to find that one tweet by Neville, who's not been on since well, Let's, let's do some of our made-up funnier ones that they're, aren't they're that funny. Well, I, the, the jury's out whether they're funny or not, Sam. Yes, uh, at Wimbledon official. Mm. Never forget who the fucker hashtag Milton Keynes. Yeah, as well. Yeah, the thieving bastards, as I've already mentioned. I've got one from before the game and one that follows on afterwards. So this is from at Flaky Leads. We've messed this up. Not a chance we'll go up. So I presume that's after the game we'd, we'd lost beforehand. I and love then... how you know the uh, intonation of these people when they're writing these tweets. Well, again, I made them up before the podcast, so <laughs> you get very <laughs> animated. Wow. Well, uh, and then at Flaky Leads again. After the game, we're going up one win away. <laughs> uh, at Beast and Massive, Max Gradle has the twinkliest toes ever. I hope he stays at, stays at Leeds for a long time. What a steal. Oh, absolutely. To be fair, it's a right bargain. Oh, and one that's just popped up on my notifications. At Brov Heath oh, 69 says, favourite part of the week is reading Ken's Corner in the programme. You know, um, hashtag what? Bates out. Really? Yeah. Oh, actually, he's done, he's done, that, that sounds actually quite um, quite knowledgeable for him for once. Yeah, strange. Um, do, you know, do you know Darren on LS11 used to be the poor sucker who used to have to interview Uncle Ken? On uh, Yorkshire, on the Yorkshire Radio, Radio. Yorkshire, Yorkshire Listening Yorkshire to the Radio. ramblings of a madman for an hour every single week. How much Subway do you think he ate? Darren or Ken Bates? Both. Yeah, no, no, well, no, Ken no. used to ring him from his yacht, didn't he? Yeah, from Monaco. Yeah. Where he didn't pay any tax. Really? Yeah, well, obviously. Of course he wouldn't. No, or, or, or the £8 million we got for Delph. Probably no tax on that. Got shifted out, like you said. Anyway, I've got some more tweets. Go on, then. Um, one from at Grayson's Hairline. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Thanks. Well done. Decent ref. Decent performance. Two cup finals to go. Um, and then I've got from at Becchio's wife. Just says hashtag Bates out at Super Leeds hashtag Bates out and at you what hashtag Bates out mm. popular man he definitely Uncle was Ken. I've run out of credit my phone wants to disconnect oh. I can't yeah. tether anymore I need to close down the close the portal o- Oprah can we close it down for good <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think we might lose this feature uh, if you want to keep it let us know if not if we hear pure silence for you or just tell us to get rid of it we will happily do that yes I uh, might have to think of something more creative unless we do a game unless we do a game where we actually can do real tweets and maybe that's worth looking at 
Um, maybe in 10 years' time when we've got like 17 people. Well, we were going to do the Mad Friday game, weren't we? And, yes. Um, until, until another podcast did it. I know. So like the I, know. I found a boatload of tweets from that. I know. We could do. I know. We'll find something. First, you turn the time circuits on. <laughs> oh, look at this. It's standing Lee cars. Ah. They're pulling up at Ellen Road. Are they looking for a Greek man? They're picking up somebody. <laughs> Who may that be? I've called a taxi. Why you take so long? All these people in my way. Wow. I know. Wow. Uh, it's uh, it's Chilino's Stanley Cars. He's going to jump into it. He's going to take a trip up the M621 slip road, hit the heady heights of 50 miles an hour, and wallop, travel back in time to April 10th. Chilino's time machine taxi. might use the other one who knows that was in tune though it was good yeah good harmony yes Chilino. wow i think if you did go back early there's a lot of fun you could have here maybe you already did well, well and that's what happened after the man united game the, the question is right bearing in mind that we're not too far from Chilino's reign anyway so you're only going talking three four years in the future where Chilino comes in and takes over from from gfh is Leeds United served better under the stewardship of Kenneth Bates or Massimo Cellino? I can't answer that question. Maybe, maybe they, they got together and they're like super villains. Maybe like it was Dr. Evil and Mini Me. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> Uh, good, good old Troy, big fan, big Leeds fan. I know he was big Leeds fan. So for me, if we're talking about the the evils, right? I think actually Salino, in a way, meant well. Yeah, in a in a way, but he was an egotistical maniac. Yeah, he just wanted a football club that would win and would do anything yeah. to try and get a football club to win. Yeah, which and went about everything the completely wrong way. Yeah. Where Ken Bates knew what he was doing, knew what he was ripping out, was a far worse person. So actually, if you're Massimo Salino, bear in mind, let's just say at this point, he's no interest in buying Leeds United at this moment in time. You're best off letting Bates carry on, selling Becchio earlier possibly or something like that. He can't do much more damage than what Bates does, but he could stop us from going up. Mm, that's if true. we don't win this game, we don't go up. Simple as that. We only won, got in second place by one point. So if we don't win this game, we don't go up. So, so he could he could stop that, but then massive repercussions then. Yeah, yeah. I think so. He only has to upset one more game. We 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 lose we lose Beckford anyway. We lose he goes to the Premier League regardless of our contract, which he does. But then probably Becchio moves on. He don't. Gradle's probably gone. Snodgrass goes a season early. Bradley Johnson goes a season early. Was Sean Harvey involved at the club at this time? Of course he was. Maybe uh, Cellino and uh, Sean Harvey became best mates. They despised each other, I believe. I'm sure, well, yeah, there were enough money into yeah, the football this league. Is, this is for Leeds. While he was working at Leeds, it could be completely different. What do you think happens then? What, what does Cellino do? Would he stop us from going up or does he want us to go because he's going to buy the club? No, I think he wants us to lose so he can buy us as cheap as possible. But then would he even be interested? Because his whole thing was getting these in the Premier League, like he's done with Brescia now. 25,000 fans in League One, he would be interested at those Gates receipts. Why was nobody else then? Because you've got to do business with Ken Bates. And actually, it wasn't until. Chilean wasn't on the scene until GFH came in and did whatever they did. And I can't even put into words what GFH did, Jesus. Why have we had them all? Bates, Chilean, or GFH. God. Because we're a massive club with a massive following, with global appeal. Well, why, why do the Cowboys get attracted to it? I... Because we've had bad people on the board since Fotherby. Probably. Rizdale was well-intentioned again. No, but he, he saw kind the of. pipe dream but didn't manage the money right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, back Pop to... Popular the... to what people would like to say at the moment, I do believe that... Radrazani has got the best interest of this club at his heart. But if you're listening, Rads, stay off fucking Twitter, mate. Yes, turn it off. Stop being a bell end. Um, manage, manage the club, manage the finances, manage all of those contracts and all those deals you've got to do. Stay off social media. A lot of people disagree with you, though, about him. I know. 
Yeah, and, and then I think that's fine to have that debate. I think we should always question our owners and their intentions. This and man's come doing. in, and for the last two seasons, we've had one of the best football coaches in the game that's widely respected by a lot True. of other coaches. See Leeds have its highest finishes in the last couple of years and playing some bloody beautiful football. True, and I wouldn't change that. I wouldn't. And I'm going to thoroughly enjoy the last 13 games of this season. Just, not. just enjoying for what they are. Again, by the time this goes out, it, I know, those I know, games that's... could have gone and we'll... Uh... I've got my Leeds optimism back. My Leeds optimism cap is firmly on my head. Well, you look back at this season, we've just, we've just looked at that game there. A lot of, lot of ups and downs. And in 10 years' time, when we start reviewing these games, I look forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then we can really rave about the football. Really rave about it. Anyway, that was all a bit serious. I know, I know. Um, I need to say something stupid. Well, that's easy, because what's next? The quiz. Oh, excellent. T- turn your time circuits off, anyway. Yes, time to uh, get, get Chilino back. And it's time for the quiz. You know, I'm really glad that no other podcasts do quizzes like uh, we do quizzes. <laughs> anyway, here's the thing. <laughs> So, you've got a lot of stick about the Johan Cruyff thing. So I need to educate you. And the best way to educate you is by making a fool of yourself so you then go away and learn it so you don't make a fool of yourself again. <laughs> so, I go now. so, we're not talking Leeds United this week. We're talking world football. World football. Thanks. But it's really easy. Can I use Google? No. Oh. It's really easy. Okay. Right. You've heard of, have you heard of the Ballon d'Or? Yes, I have heard of the Ballon d'Or. Right, basically the Ballon d'Or is given to the best player in the world every single year. Yeah. So I'm going to go through the last ten winners of the Ballon No, not the last ten winners, the last ten different winners of the Ballon d'Or. And all you need to tell me is what country they come from. These are the, the best players in the world, Sam. Yeah, I, I'm not, that's geography. It's not geography. Yeah. But... You know, you've, you've seen World Cups. You should, come on, this is easy, right. I'm going to do it in reverse order as well, so you're going to, you're going to find like the more recent ones first. Get your confidence up a bit. I've never, I know what the ballon, I know what it is. We're but... gonna, we're gonna, yeah, but the ballon d'or's not relevant. I'm just going to name fo- the best footballers in the world, <laughs> according, <laughs> according to ballon d'or. Right, okay. And you name what country they're from. And, and if I get too wrong, can we just stop there? <laughs> well, you've got three lifelines. In this. Oh, so it's ten, you've got three lifelines. Can right. I phone a friend? No. Mm. Who would you ring? Me, probably, and I, I'm not going to give you the answer. Right, ready? No. Well, you're going to have to be. <laughs> Let's start with an easy one. All right. Lionel Messi. Oh. Okay, he's from the same country as Bielsa. Let's give you a Argentina. start for ten. Very good, one point. Right, I'm going to miss the next one now because you won't get that. We'll say it anyway, we may as well say No, we'll come back, we'll come back to it. Let's get you few on the board. Okay. Right, Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, Portugal. There we go, you see. Well, how come you know where he's from, but don't know where Messi's Cause from? Because he was a dick against England once. He, um, yeah, true. And played for Scum. Okay, Kaka. Brazilian. Very good. See? Sometimes use the names, we'll give you the... Mm. Something you don't even need to. So we're doing well now. Three out of three. Fabio Cannavaro. Italian. Very good. Ronaldinho. Brazilian. Very good. Andrei Shevchenko. Gut me wants to say, the gut in me wants to say Russian. Right. But he's not Russian. Correct, he's not Russian. So where else would he be from with that name? I want to say Ukraine. You're right with Ukraine. See? Okay. See, you get in. Okay. Pavel Nedved. Pavel. European. Correct. Say it again. Pavel Nedved. Polish. No, it's a good try. Is it, they, they, this one I knew you wouldn't get, to be fair. Um, he's from the Czech Republic. Mm. Michael Owen. Not a clue, English. Right, there we go. So, How many have I got? So far, right, I'm going to go back to the one you, that I missed out at the start. So, 
if you get that wrong, then there's one last one for you to get my respect. But you might get this one right, and you, you've already got my respect. Luka Modric. Luka Modric. You've still got a lifeline after this if you do get it wrong, so don't stress too much. I want to say Czechoslovakian, but I don't think the country existed at the time. <laughs> We've had Pavel Nedvedu's Czech Republic, so you know. Mm, so that's the or Slovakia Czech and Slovakia okay, split yeah, up. Yeah. And then Midrich. Modric. Modric. Played for Spurs. Went to Real Kazakhstan? Madrid. Kazakhstan? No, it's not. It's Croatia. Oh. It's Croatia. So, final one. This is exciting. Final one. So, how many have I got out of ten? So, you've got out of nine so far, you've got seven right out of nine. Right. So if you get this right, you get my respect. And if you get this wrong, you don't get my respect. Why don't you give me a really hard one to I haven't. On? I haven't given you a hard one. Mm. Johan Cruyff Sam. <laughs> it couldn't have been set up any better. Where is Johan Cruyff from? Swedish. No! <laughs> He's Dutch. Oh, man. So close. So close. I know I'm getting you for Christmas. I won't read Apart it. from Mr. Frosty. I'm going to get you a Johan Cruyff shirt. No, I won't watch it. You're sulking again, aren't you? Yeah, of course I am. You're sulking again. You did well. Basically, the Cruyffs, they are my arch nemeses, and uh, I, I just don't want to hear about them ever again. Well, your yard is a waste of space, so don't worry about him. Just just Johan. And he was a lot of players, arch Hey, look, he could turn around. That was it. Yay. Won Ballon d'Or three times. Did he? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well done. So I think that wraps us up for this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pass Am I you. taking over now? <laughs> no, 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 no. So yes, yet again, I've not won your respect, Adam, as we look down the barrel of another week where you failed to teach me anything. We, we will go back to Legion United questions. Brilliant. If you've enjoyed this roller coaster of an episode, why don't you retweet us, uh, follow us on Twitter, give us a five-star review on the podcast system. That would be absolutely lovely or however you listen to us leave us some feedback it's really good and we'll give you a shout out if we can um you can do that by following us on twitter at a better goal and if you search for a better goal on facebook or instagram you will also find us on those channels as well a big thank you to ls11 who host our podcast and the boys there and uh, we'll see you again in a few weeks time when we do our next indeed we will see you later adam see you later Sam.